Hi everyone, it's Alicia, design anthropologist at MindSpark. I'm here with Nikki, CEO and founder of MindSpark, and we're gonna be discussing a new remote research and collaboration tool. Um, actually, I don't know if it's new, it's new for me, <laughs> as part of our ongoing webinar series. So hi, Nikki, thanks so much for chatting with me today. Hello, thanks for having me. Um, I'm enjoying our webinar series. You know, we as UX and market researchers are relying so heavily on remote research tools these days. So what we try to do with the series is break down what our experience has been using some of these tools, other ways we hope to use them, and then try to anticipate whatever questions you might have or be wondering about these tools. And today we will be discussing dun, 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 <laughs> Mentimeter. Um, do you want to break down for us a little bit, give a little spiel about what Mentimeter is? Sure. Um, so Mentimeter, actually, that's that's a great part of it is is the spiel, because Mentimeter, from my understanding, was actually created to be an interactive presentation tool. So if you are giving a presentation to clients and you don't want them falling asleep at their desks, or especially now that we're in the world where presentations and such are are almost exclusively in many areas of the world happening remotely, um, Mentimeter is designed to help make your presentations be interactive and more engaging so you can actually involve the viewers of your presentation instead of just throwing information at them. Um, so what's interesting is I love that it was designed as a presentation platform because it means that everything that they do and all of their tools and their output is really aesthetically pleasing. It's nice mm -hmm. to look at um, and easy to use but actually we have been using it more for workshops. And I have to say the first time I ever experienced Mentimeter was as a participant in a conference. So I know that there's actually lots of different ways that people are using Mentimeter outside of their originally intended presentation usage. That's so cool. I love that, that it kind of morphed um, because yeah, I don't even think about it as a, as a presentation tool per se, yeah. but more as like a way to get people to chat and answer questions and but we'll get more into that. Um, so tell us a little bit more about how it works or how you you have used it. Yeah, so essentially you sign up and you create an account and they have a lot of different, uh, what I would call um, input mechanisms. So as it says here on the slide, there are things like polls, you can do open-ended questions. Um, there's a, a bunch of different kinds of activities that you can actually um, share out to your audience and then have your um, audience actually participate back in. And as they're participating back in, the responses are shared live um, on the screen and you can use that for discussion. And then you can also save those responses and they can be, so for example, um, when we use them for workshops and things, it saves those responses and then we're able to create a report after or share back and do some further analysis based on the kinds of responses that we got in. Amazing. So super useful even after the fact. Yeah, totally. Um, so break it down. What are some of its strengths? Oh man. Well, one of the strengths is what I what I first mentioned um, is that it's really aesthetically pleasing, which means that you kind of want to use it. So I feel like if you are a participant in a workshop or a presentation or a conference like myself, um, you see it and it's easy. It's just super easy to input your responses, whether it's a poll response where the answer options have already been provided to you or whether it's open end and you're creating a list or um, you're doing other things like they've got some points activity activities. Um, so it's really easy and easy to share out as well. So they've got a, a couple of different ways to share the activity that you create, whether that be through a link or a QR code. Um, and then the other thing is um, that's listed here is that there are a lot of different activity types. Um, so quizzes and polls, um, but in addition to kind of like the basic things, one of the things that's um, really fascinating about the Mentimeter app in terms of their like breadth of different things that you can do is that they are essentially, they have an inspiration tab as well. So they have ways to teach you, to inspire you to, to use, to kind of get the most out of all of their different activity types. So you can actually go into Mentimeter, you can click on their inspiration tab and you can see, oh, well, I'm thinking about doing an activity like this and they will actually provide 
provide you some examples that will help you to understand what's the best activity or question type for you to use based on what you're trying, you know, the way you're trying to engage your audience. And then, yeah, loving that all of the data can be exported and captured. So um, from a conference perspective, when I was engaging with Mentimeter as a participant, you know, I'm sure you can envision you're sitting in a room, try to remember back to the old days when we were all in face-to-face -face oh, conferences. Yeah. Reminisce. <laughs> um, you could be sitting there and somebody could be asking you, um, asking the audience for maybe reactions to a piece of media that they just showed you. And, the, you know, as I said, they can share out either via a QR code or a link, and then the people watching the conference can, or participating in the conference can access the Mentimeter, and then they can, you know, start putting in their reactions. Oh, I loved it, I hated it, whatever. Um, and then you see all of the results populating live, which is so fascinating. And then you're also sort of sitting there looking around you, like, who's the person that said this was a great ad? It's obviously horrible. Um, <laughs> and so it kind of, you know, generates energy. And then of course, at the end, you have all of this data that you have collected. And um, for both presentations, or for both conferences and workshops, I should say, um, it's super helpful. Um, from a conference perspective, it's really helpful to have that data captured because um, it can help you if you're going to re-give that presentation or that conference talk at another time. So maybe it can even help you to tweak the way that you present the information, or maybe if you were really hoping for some extreme exaggerated reactions to an ad and you didn't get it, um, you can choose something else. But also for workshops, it's really helpful because you know, in a lot of times with workshops, you want to produce an output at the end that kind of wraps up what were the key takeaways and how did people feel as you were engaging through the various activities. And this basically does it for you. So in the old days of, of workshops, when you used to have sticky notes, which you know that's also really fun and can be a really great thing to reminisce about. About. Mm -hmm. uh, you used to have to, you know, collect all the sticky notes. And I know that for me, you know, when we would do focus groups or other time types of uh, in-person co-creation, you would be taking a picture of all of these things that you've designed on the wall with all the different sticky notes and index cards and et cetera. And this oh, yeah. sort of like does it for you in, in a really pretty way. So it kind of just automatically creates some slides for you. That's nice. So it manages some of that, um, yeah, that data capture. Uh, yeah. That's great. Um, you totally already answered some of these. Because what, <laughs> one thing I was wondering, is this only for remote presentations or for remote teams? Yeah, and I would say that it's definitely not. Um, I think that one of the things, um, one of the secret things that I did not actually mention as a strength, but I do find it to be particularly interesting is um, if you want to do something face to face where you might be asking some sensitive questions or you might be having a particularly difficult presentation or on a touchy topic, um, Mentimeter is great because you can actually encourage people to participate in the conversation and their responses are anonymous. So oh. what's great is that if you're trying to say, okay, we need to overhaul our company culture, let's do a Mentimeter and let me hear some of the, you know, the words that come to mind about the the culture maybe you want to be able to have people respond in a really open and honest and candid way and if you already know for example that there are certain elements of the co company culture which could be toxic then by doing a mentimeter you can have everybody in the same room and allow them to express their opinions safely and freely but without that sort of pointing fingers thing. And without the fear of like, I don't wanna be the first person to say that my boss is a jerk, but we all kind of know it's true. Mentimeter mm -hmm. um, can kind of really help with broaching those kinds of topics in a face-to-face -face setting. So definitely not only for remote teams. Wow, well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you, and you already answered this one too, but are there other types of questions that you think would work really well in this or with yeah. this? Um, that is a great question, actually, because I feel like um, in full transparency, Mentimeter has a lot and I haven't like had the opportunity to explore all of the different features that they have. Mm -hmm. So my hypothesis is that there are probably a lot more kinds of questions um, that would be a good fit for Mentimeter that I don't even necessarily know about. But I would say off the top of my head, um, anything where you are trying to showcase like the breadth or the range of reactions to something um, by having the um, open-ended question type 
in there, it generates live a word cloud. And I know there are a lot of people in research who <laughs> word clouds are very divisive. <laughs> some people love them and some people hate them. Um, but if you're just trying to use it as an activity and you're not trying to use it to convince a stakeholder to make a multi-million dollar decision, then it can be really, really interesting to see that word cloud because of course the words that get put in more than once become bigger in the word cloud and words that get put in fewer times are smaller. So you really can quickly get a snapshot of what reactions are across the range. So I would say that that's definitely one good question type. Um, one thing that I haven't gotten to do often enough um, from a facilitator standpoint, but I have done um, from a participant standpoint is ranking. So mm -hmm. if you want to, let's say that you've just done a brainstorming session or a co-creation session and you have come up with 13 different ideas and you're like, okay, well, we don't necessarily know which of these ideas we should be acting on first. You can kind of quickly throw them up into Mentimeter, share the link or the QR code and people can rank them and it will kind of do an output for you that sort of meta analyzes the ranking and it's really helpful and quick and fun. Oh, that's nice. Especially if you can submit your votes in, in an anonymous way, because I know when you have people vote on physical post-its, sometimes they get a little bit shy and they wait for other people to vote first. And then they yes, say. exactly. And you're like, I don't want to say this, you know, mm -hmm. maybe like there's an idea that you feel like might not be widely appreciated, but it's your favorite. And so maybe you're not, you know, super keen on saying that outright. But yeah, Mentimeter definitely helps with that. Super. Um, and we chatted about this a little bit, but um, you mentioned there's some uh, features that you can use without even having to invest in it, right? Yeah. So they've got a free version, um, which I think is in and of itself, just an excellent value. Um, it's got so much that you can do for free. And then they've got other question types, which, um, you know, to get the most out of them, you probably want to have an upgraded version. I would say that actually, if I remember correctly, most of the question types that I was interested in are available on the free version. Um, I think the, the major limitation of the free version is just that you can only have so many questions live at the same time. Um, and so, you know, if you're trying to stick within a free version, it's totally workable as long as you're aware of the limitations of how many exercises you can do. And then of course, if you wanna do more because it is such a great tool, then you can upgrade. Got it. So it might be good to, it's good to try it out, be inspired. And then if you really want to go and do several things simultaneously, you probably will then have to invest. Yes, exactly. Um, I had like, this question is kind of just uh, nitpicky pot <laughs> potentially, <laughs> but like, how do you, how actually does it work? Do you, are you making your presentation in this separate platform? Are you embedding this like link or tool or you mentioned a QR code or mm -hmm. how does that? work. Yeah, so um, one of the things there are a couple of different ways to share the presentation. So I think what you would normally do is you would have your presentation living in a separate platform. And that could be PowerPoint. And that could be Prezi if people are still using Prezi and that could, oh, be, Prezi. <laughs> Prezi. Yeah. Um, that could be Google Slides or whatever it is that you are presenting on. Um, and then you have a couple of of different ways to share the presentable um, Mentimeter activity. So you can actually invite people to join. So you can send um, to email addresses, I believe. Um, you can uh, do the QR code, like I mentioned. Um, there's also a digit code. And so the digit code is that you can tell people to go to menti.com and you'll provide the digit code within your presentation. And so once they go to menti.com, they'll be asked for the digit code and they um, plug that in and it links to your um, activity. And then they also can just provide a direct link. So what I try to do when I'm using it is I try to provide more than one way to access. Um, so I, I, you know, you never have any idea of what quality someone's phone has and how much internet access they have. So maybe a QR code is not the best. Um, so maybe it's better to provide a link. And again, with um, uh, presentations and workshops happening so much in remote formats these days, it's great because um, people might be sitting there at their computer, but have their phone right next to them so they can take the QR, take 
the phone, scan the QR code and participate that way without, you know, navigating away from the presentation that you have on the screen. Um, but alternatively, if the phone doesn't work, I try to also share the link at the same time so that people can, if they want to type a longer answer, they can just click on the link from, for example, the chat function in the presentation, and then they can go ahead and type and answer from their keyboard. Wow, great. So a few different options. Mm -hmm. And when you used it, did you get a sense, were people eager to use it? Were they able to use it? How did the engagement work? Yeah, so I can't say that um, I know for sure that 100% of people definitely participated in every menti Mentimeter activity that I've ever launched. But I can say that um, we definitely got a lot of responses in, in the time that in a few times that I've used it from a facilitator standpoint. And also um, on the back end, gotten a lot of feedback, I would say that it's it's not that difficult to get people to participate theoretically because they want to. I think a lot of people, especially these days, are really tired of having in, uh, information just like bestowed upon them <laughs> without mm -hmm. having a two-way conversation or any kind of dialogue involved. So knowing that there's a way that you can actually impact the discussion really makes people want to participate. Um, and then again, it comes down to how well you've designed the activity or how you've worded the question and whether or not it's it's something that people feel confident that they can engage with. So if you were to say, you know, how are black holes formed? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure that you're going to get a lot of responses on the meter. But if you're saying, Saying, hey, I want to collect a word cloud on how did you feel today? Um, I think people really enjoy participating. So that's that's a bonus. Well, that's good to know that the you still need a researcher involved, even if <laughs> Mentimeter is a great tool. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you want to mention about Mentimeter or your favorite thing about it or any anything else about it that you want to talk about? Um, I will just say quickly that my favorite thing about it is that it kind of handles a lot of these, you know, nitpicky formatting things for you. So I know that we probably all of us spend a decent amount of time anytime we're doing a presentation or a workshop tweaking things like the color of the deck and the logo and the font. Um, and this kind of does that for you. You can choose themes so you can decide kind of is your theme, is your slide going to have a black background or a white background? But other than that, it doesn't give you too many choices and uh, it just sort of decides for you and all of the decisions that it takes for you are pretty nice ones so I feel like that was a really big relief off of my mind when I was using it as I was thinking oh I'm gonna have to set up this question and I'm gonna have to tell it to do this and that and with these colors and font sizes and I didn't have to do any of that and it still looked really nice it looked like it belonged in my presentation so I think that's that's a really good bonus as well oh that's great well, thank you so much for telling us all about Mentimeter. I can't wait to use it more myself. And mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone listening, I'm ho I hope that that was helpful. And please join us for our next webinar episode. Yes, thanks so much. Thank you.